Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be understanding intramembranous ossification. The term osteogenesis is derived from two words that is osteo meaning bone and genesis meaning formation. Therefore, osteogenesis is the process of bone formation. It usually begins between 6th and 7th week of embryonic development and it continues till around 25 years of age. If we have a look at this process embryologically, it is the cranial neural crest cells which form the flat bones of the skull, clavicle and the cranial bones, excluding a portion of the temporal and occipital bones. The somites form the remainder of the axial skeleton which include the skull, ears, neck, back and the ribcage, while it is the lateral plate mesoderm which forms the long bones. The process of bone formation requires a template for development and this template is usually in form of a cartilage derived from the embryonic mesoderm but also it includes an undifferentiated mesenchyme. So based on this, the bone ossification can either be intramembranous or endochondrial. So each of this process begins with the mesenchymal tissue precursor but it differs in how this precursor is transformed into bone. Intramembranous ossification directly converts the mesenchymal tissue into bone and forms the flat bones of the skull, clavicle and most of the cranial bones. Endochondral ossification on the other hand begins with the mesenchymal tissue which transforms into a cartilage intermediate and it is this cartilage intermediate which is eventually replaced by bone. This ossification is responsible for the formation of remainder of the axial skeleton and the long bones. So I found this illustration on web where they differentiate into the sites of ossification. For the intramembranous ossification, they use this memory aid that the skull needs to ossify fast, considering that the skull bones must ossify prior to the delivery of the fetus, so the brain isn't squashed during childbirth because intramembranous type is more of a direct form of ossification. While for the endochondral type, they use this mnemonic that is kids better bounce not break because kids they grow extensively during the pediatric development and therefore their bones require some amount of pliability which is offered only through the cartilage. Therefore considering that for that particular time the children fall often and therefore they must bounce and not break. So now that we have understood that in intramembranous ossification, the mesenchymal precursor directly transforms into bone. Let's understand how. So the neural crest derived mesenchymal cells first differentiate into a specialized bone forming cell called osteoblast. These osteoblasts group into clusters and form an ossification center. The osteoblast then starts secreting osteoid which is a bone precursor and unmineralized collagen proteoglycan matrix that has the ability to bind calcium. The binding of calcium to the osteoid results in the hardening of the matrix and entrapment of these osteoblasts. So these osteoblasts now transform into osteocytes. As osteoid continues to be secreted by the osteoblast, it surrounds itself by the blood vessels. So this leads to formation of a bone which is called the trabecular, cancellous, spongy or the woven bone. So these vessels will eventually form the red bone marrow. And eventually in the later stages of the process, the mesenchymal cells on the surface of the bone form a membrane called the periosteum. The cells on the inner surface of the periosteum differentiate into osteoblast and again secrete an osteoid which is parallel to that of the existing matrix, therefore forming layers. Now these layers are called the compact or the cortical bone. So given on your screen is the final structure of the bones that are obtained from the intramembranous ossification. They are bound on both sides by a layer of compact bone and a fibrous periosteum. While on the inside they have a spongy bone with bone marrow also called the diplo. So this flowchart summarizes the entire process of intramembranous ossification. So we begin with mesoderm in which the mesenchymal cells migrate and differentiate to form bone forming osteoblast. These osteoblasts cluster to form an ossification center which secretes an osteoid and it has the ability to bind calcium. Therefore, it traps the osteoblast and transforms them into osteocytes. 
Now this osteoid develops into a woven bone which has presence of numerous blood vessels. This bone matures to form layer of compact bone which is secreted by the inner layer of cells of osteoblast which lie beneath the fibrous periosteum and finally it leads to the formation of a compact bone. So that was all for intramembranous ossification. I really hope with the help of illustrations, diagrams and the memory aids, you were able to understand the entire process. So that's all. Thank you.